Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to today's episode right here on the School of Radiance podcast. I'm your host, a humble human on a mission here to help you achieve and receive the best hair, skin, and nails of your life and look and feel fantastic all at the same time. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about a couple of different things, including biohacking our HRV for more energy and how sometimes shifting our lives can impact our HRV, as well as tips for better sleep and also some men and women's health tips in there too. We always cover things with the angle of the healthier we are on the inside, the better we're going to look on the outside. So let's focus on the insides and some key metrics, including HRV with Angela Foster. She is a nutritionist, a health and performance coach, coach, creator of Biosync and host of top 10 alternative health podcast, High Performance Health. As a former partner in a large law firm, Angela is no stranger to the demands of long working hours and the difficulties facing women in combining high performance with family life while still optimizing their health and longevity. After suffering burnout and major depressive disorders culminating in a life-threatening battle with pneumonia, Angela used biohacking, holistic health, and spiritual practices to rebuild her mental and physical health. As a regular podcaster and speaker at events and large corporations, Angela shares the science and practical tools unique to women to empower them to optimize their health, performance, and longevity while embracing their female physiology. Angela is the creator of Biosync, a unique program for the high-performance woman who wants to step into the most authentic and empowered version of herself and achieve longevity in business. Learn more about Angela Foster at AngelaFosterPerformance.com. And you can also find her website, Ways to Work With Her, in the description of today's episode. Welcome, Angela, onto the show. How are you today? I'm so well, Rachel. Thank you so much. Super excited to be here with you. Absolutely. We've had the opportunity to connect together and love what you're doing. Love that you're performing, you're combining performance and biohacking and spirituality and women's health and all these things. So we're going to get get into some nerdy quantification of Mm -hmm. some stats in just a second. But I'd love to ask you, Angela, what is radiance to you? So I'd love to ask you, Angela, what is radiance to you? I think radiance to me is when you're kind of glowing from the inside out, right? I think that's what it means to me. And with that, I think it's about living truly in sync. When I talk about biosyncing, that's really what it is at its core, is to like living in sync with your purpose, with your values, and, and really with what you love in life and kind of coming from that vibration of love. And I think that you just then see that in individuals, right? It just glows through and it shines. And there's something special, there's kind of like a sparkle about you. So that's really what radiance is to me. All right. I just lost you at it glows through and it shines. Yeah, it glows through and it shines. And it's kind of that sparkle that you see, that little bit of magic in someone. Uh, That's what radiance is to me. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. I love this whole concept of living in sync and especially with the physiology of women. We are cyclical beings. So are men in their own ways as well. Um, I'd love to dive deep a little bit into your story. So you came from the corporate world. You realized that that, you know, working like a man wasn't good for your body or your family. At what point did you come to that realization? I I understand you had some health issues. So it sounds like it likely became very loud and clear that you needed to switch things up. For myself, it was getting into car crashes to then move to more in sync, slower type of lifestyle. But what was that like for you going from, you know, the corporate law world to then slowing down and operating in a way that was more conducive for your health and also for your family life? 
It's a great question. So I think I think the thing is there were warning signs along the way. I think in my 20s, I felt really invincible. I think most of us do, even though we're not, right? And so we kind of push, push, push. And that was the conditioning to get ahead. And I was ignoring a lot of things that I think you would have picked up, right? If you'd known me along the way, like I had PCOS, I had endometriosis, I had these problems, but it just felt like there was a medication or surgery or something for everything. And um, I, I made partner when I was eight months pregnant with my first child. So it was kind of a crazy year, very little sleep. And I think that's the thing, right? There's no real circadian alignment in corporate law. You're just going to work to get the deal done, work weekends, pull up all nighters. And that was what it was like. And then when I had my children, I struggled with postnatal depression each time I had my children. And that's what, as you were saying in the intro there, it resulted in major depressive disorder. And I was struggling, if I'm honest, like really, really battling this kind of of prison in my own mind that I'd created because I later learned you are not your thoughts but at the time I felt so controlled by them and that took an effect on my immune health which led to pneumonia I think because I was just trying to find a way out I was thinking you know I didn't want to end my own life and leave my kids without a mother but I also just wanted to turn off what was going on in my head and I couldn't get a handle around it and so I at that point was on pretty strong antipsychotic and bipolar medication I got pneumonia, I was neutropenic, kind of rushed into hospital. Um, and that's that's when I realized I've got to do something about this, right? I had viral and bacterial pneumonia over both lungs. I'd had so much antibiotics, it wasn't working. Um, and I knew with viruses, right, you've got the immune system needs to kick in. And I was neutropenic at the time. So I had this very real situation where maybe I wasn't going to see a way out. And it was at that point that it was a wake up call, but I also felt this profound sense of peace you know I've been trying to run away from myself this whole time um, and there I was at the hospital with nowhere to go and only with myself and I remember looking at photos of my children and just thinking god I want to see them grow up like I've, I've got to find a way and it, it was that and that's why I say coming from this vibration of love and within 48 hours Rachel of me making that decision my blood work changed so my white blood cells started to rise uh, and I started to, to heal. And it was when I came out of hospital that I then started on this journey, which initially was a very, I guess, a selfish journey, right? To figure out how can I get truly healthy? And I realized over time it was a mind, body, spirit thing. I had to target all areas. It wasn't going to be one or the other. Um, and so I was working on my health. And then over time, as I got better, um, you know, back in 2019, I started the concept of high performance health was born when I started the podcast. And it was really about trying to marry up these two worlds and help women find uh, the opportunity, if you like, to be able to have their family life, have optimal health um, and enjoy it all and still have high performance in their careers. Um, and that's when kind of the mission kind of really began. Oh, beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing all that. Clearly, you're eight months pregnant. You just made partner at a law firm. There is a lot going on. I'm curious because this was kind of like that point that broke the camel's back. You know, system shut down across the board, which required you, it actually your own body forced you to be cared for and nurtured by someone else. And the feminine is what does that in the family unit. We nurture and care for the family. Uh, keep our families health, healthy, right? That's a very deep-rooted feminine need for the family unit. But you needed to be cared for yourself too. You needed to be nurtured in that feminine way. So that's that's kind of an interesting dynamic there. But energetically and emotionally, I know we're going to talk about HRV training and some of the things that you notice with values in our lives but what was really going on with you looking back energetically, spiritually, emotionally that really led to this breakdown in your systems and this big shake up, wake up call for you? I think from a spiritual perspective, I don't think I had, I was always so when we look at kind of mental, physical and spiritual health, I had always kind of like stayed fit, right? That was a big thing for me, even when I was practicing as a lawyer. I think I ate pretty well, definitely not on the level that I eat now. Um, 
but I didn't respect things like sleep. And I don't think that I was spiritually aligned at that point. And definitely corporate law, or, <laughs> corporate law wasn't my purpose in life, if you like. And I think I'd been raised in a very strict Catholic upbringing. So it had a whole kind of religious framework around it, which isn't necessarily wrong. It was just not something that I had been connecting with. And so that sort of had left to a departure. And I think that when you then detach a little bit spiritually, right, and from having that being in sync with God and with source energy, it kind of leaves you in a different place. And I was working on my mental health because I'd had, you know, it, with each child, it was kind of getting worse. And it was after my two years after my first child that I was hospitalized with pneumonia. And I was doing things like cognitive behavioral therapy. But then I started to read more and more spiritual books. And when I came out of the hospital, I remember reading uh, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself by Dr. Joe Dispenza. And I was like, that's it. That's exactly what I've got to do. I've literally got to break the habit of being me and create a new self because there had been so much self-loathing. Like I, I felt like I was a terrible mother, you know, and I think just that journey of self-love and learning to do that was a journey in itself. And that's very much kind of embracing that divine feminine. I think I very much gravitated as a, ch a young child, and maybe that's why. It's, it's really interesting because I had this conversation with Dr. Libby Weaver from New Zealand on my show. She was talking about the fact that she'd observed that in women with PCOS, often they had um, fathers who were quite um, quite strong, right, and, and in terms of their expectations and things. And I, and I, and it's quite an interesting thing there. So, and she was like, you know, if this resonates, then great. If it doesn't, then just leave it. And maybe that doesn't resonate for everyone. And I think I had definitely in the world of corporate law and just growing up embraced, you know, I was a real daddy's girl, embraced more of that masculine. And, and this situation sort of forced me into a situation, as you say, to embrace more of that feminine energy. And ultimately I had to kind of succumb to it, which is really interesting. It's great insight, Rachel. Yeah, I actually have some overlaps myself too. I, you know, daddy's girl too. Great relationship with my father. Beautiful, kind man. And he would take me to car shows as soon as I could walk. Obviously became a big petrol head myself too. Took apart vehicles, dirt bikes, you name it. Loved playing in the masculine, right? All these mm. tomboy type of activities. But then over time, as I got a little bit older, I was, I was like a little too much of a tomboy, a bit too much in the masculine. And I kind of wonder if there's different cultures or different pockets where, because I know in, in Canada where I've grown up, it's like women here are built differently. <laughs> or places, uh, I mean, you in the UK too, where we experience all four seasons, where we get these temperature fluctuations of colder months and then warmer months. You know, there is like a little bit of a masculine resilience that I think is part of where we live. Um, just so that we don't freeze, freeze our little heinies off when we're outside in the snow and all that. But the other thing with uh, PCOS, we're going to go a little bit woo here. Um, you know, some root chakra stuff, which is also part of being grounded. It's part of feeling safe. It's part of feeling secure. Um, the other thing with PCOS that I've seen in some of the literature from parasitologists is, is the implications for parasites actually getting into the reproductive structures and creating scar tissue and adhesions and things like that so i've seen that overlap too so thanks for sharing that um i hear you on the religious framework of growing up catholic i definitely like to look at spirituality as more of like a relationship not so much of a strict framework religion um, it's going to be individual. So I'm glad that you began to incorporate that back in as well. So tell us, Angela, what are your findings with HRV, which is heart rate variability, which is basically a read of how well you're recovering, the higher the HRV, possibly the better your recovery is. And um, But what do we see, what do you see in individuals when they're looking to improve their HRV? And they can track that, say, through Aura Ring or Eight Sleep, things like that, and their life. What happens when their life is in better alignment and their HRV? 
So what we've seen that's quite interesting is we use some uh, Finnish technology called First Beat, where we can actually track people's HRV live during the day as well. And it gives them the ability to kind of tag events as they go about their day in terms of what they're doing. And so then what we see is how the daytime activities is really informing their nights. So for some people that really are in that type A, type A personality mode, right, and they're they're in that kind of grit and hustle and doing mode all the time, we'll see a lot of sympathetic engagement all day. And that can lead to one of two, broadly, I would say the majority of people fall into one of two categories when that happens. They fall into the one of, I'm so tired that I fall asleep as soon as my head hits the pillow. And those people tend to seem like they're building better capacity overnight and their HRV is recovering. But then other people can be just so hyper-stimulated that we then see that mirrored throughout the night. And so they never really seem to be getting into, and obviously it's not an EDG, we're not measuring their brain, but it looks like they're not getting into that deep recovery and deep um, slow wave sleep as much at night. And so then when we start to give them exercises and things to do during the day, just micro recoveries, and they get more of that parasympathetic engagement, then things start to calm down at night. And obviously there's different like supplements and adaptions you can use, but ultimately I like to try and train the life skills first in terms of being able to do it without anything. Um, so that's one thing that we see. And then the other one we see is when people are living in alignment with their purpose, they could be working really, really hard and pulling off kind of 12 hour days, but then they build really good capacity at night. And so, because I think they're so in alignment with what they're doing, and that might not be uh, a job that they're working at. It could even be, we've seen situations where a mother, for example, who is taking some time off now, and she's spending a few years totally dedicated to her children. And when she's spending time with the kids in what to another person could look like a high pressure environment. So breakfast before the school run with maybe five kids or we've seen and actually the mum's HRV is higher on some occasions as high as in sleep or higher and I think that's because she's emanating she's from that vibration of love right she's fulfilling her purpose in what she's doing and so it's really really individual and I think it's something that is something I'm excited about and want to look more into is just how much of a difference we can talk about you know all the things that we know and your podcast listeners know about cold exposure and heat and hydration and all these things and they all have a place but what about if we actually really assessed looking ahead into 2024 what our goals and our values were and how much are we living in sync with those because the, the rhythm of the heart seems to respond to that. Yeah, we have our heart, we have our brain, we have our gut. These are highly charged electromagnetic centers in the body. And so absolutely, once I really switched up my purpose and how I live and all of these things, my HRV metric shifted. The biggest thing that shifted my HRV was actually to sleep in electromagnetic protective clothing. <laughs> And I'm in a full silver EMF protective suit right now at the top and in the long johns down below. Um, it just makes me feel better, right? So I feel better when I'm protected from, say, wireless cellular radiation. And that really gets me to sleep um, much better and wake up more rested. And then during the day, um, you know, when we're on our computer like this and we're live streaming, we're, we're basically next to the router, that's how much EMFs those are kicking off. Mm -hmm. But the the syncing our life up with our values and our purpose, that's really cool. But I'm not surprised because the heart and blood pressure and all of that, if you are living more in your purpose, your heart, your blood pressure isn't going to be sky high. You're not going to be getting triggered at, say, a job that you don't like with a boss you don't like or coworkers that annoy the heck out of you or, you know customers, if you work at a call center and you take, you know, unhappy people's calls all day long, that's going to be hard on you for sure. But I love that example of um, a woman or in particular a mother whose HRV increased after taking time off. Well, not really taking time off, but caring for their family and being dedicated and looking after the kids. I love that. So for any of you who are thinking, of having kids, you're like, oh, do you, I want to stay at home with them? You know, there's potentially some evidence here that that's actually good for your health instead of give, getting back to work. That's actually why I do the work that I do. It's so that I have more balance in my personal and professional life so that I can work when I can work. And then when I need to care for the family, I'm there and uh, I'm readily available, which is, which is great. So I'm setting my life up that way. 
Um, and I encourage those of you who are kind of on the fence to do that too. Uh, what are some of your common trends that you're noticing, Angela, in people that just look the most beautiful? They have this air about them. They emit this beautiful, pure, radiant energy. They're in more positive emotional states. What are some of the things that people like this are doing in their lives? Because I love to study high vibe, beautiful, radiant people. Mm, me too. I think that one of the biggest things is they're, they're more disciplined in their thoughts. I think that's one of the critical things because I think we can assume, I do think, yes, when you speak to people, they might say, oh, I'm a, I'm a half cup or a, um, a cup full person, right? I don't see it empty. And maybe we can trend in one way, one direction or the other. But I think also you, it's highly trainable, right? And you can see the goodness in everything in your life. And if you can flip it, uh, it makes such a difference to your vibration, right? Even just setting intentions like we did before we started recording together was such a beautiful thing to do, right? And such a lovely moment. And I think if you can intention set for your day before you begin it, because actually every day you wake up and open your eyes, you're so lucky. You know, after my experience with the hospital, you've had experience with the car crashes. You're so lucky to be here. So then everything else is is kind of that's going to fall as a bonus. But if you can intention set around how you want your day to go and look for the goodness in everyone, I think it makes such a difference. And I think, you know, and I'm not saying we have to like never get annoyed or never, you know, get into those situations. But a lot of um, the... I suppose the opposite to radiance comes from us being undisciplined with our thoughts because we're almost, we can be like wired towards negativity in terms of those ancestral protection mechanisms. And so then, then we lose that, we lose that kind of vibration. And so I think the more that we can try and self-direct towards positivity and embrace that, you notice those people, right? Because when you, when you um, walk into a room, or when they walk into a room, you can feel that outside of them. Like people just want to be in the presence of people with high energy. And I think that's because they are thinking differently, right? Than the person who's really negative. And you see it in posture anyway, because someone who's thinking, you know, someone who is depressed, for example, their whole stature changes. It's much more slashes. The head stoops down, you know, it's looking at the floor. It's very, very different. It's not open and kind of inviting. Um, and so I would say one of the things I've noticed is thoughts. And I think we can talk about the beginning of the day, but I think the end of the day is also so important because we remember peaks and ends. And so even if our day has been going really, really well, but then a peak event happens that is actually very upsetting to us in one way or another, or it's extremely challenging, we're probably going to go and talk about that. And so if we can reframe that at the end of the day, to make the, the end of day experience a peak end of day. And the easy way to do that is to either journal and write down on your wins, think about the things you learn, think about the things you're grateful for. Or one of the things I love to do is like in bed at night is to literally walk through my day because we so easily forget what's happened and remember all the tiny little bits during my day that I loved. And it could be that I just had, you know, five minutes to myself that where I enjoyed a coffee, just peace, or I did a meditation or I'm doing this podcast with you. And as I walk through my day and I usually fall asleep before I can get to the end of it, but it's really magical because that then sets you up for a much higher vibration the next day as well. Cause we kind of wake up in the state we went to sleep in. Yeah, I love that you mentioned that. Um, so I also really love to pay attention to people who are just doing incredible at life. They look great. They feel great. They're highly vibrant. They're making an impact. They're living a life of purpose. They have faith in family. And those two Fs are very important, faith and family. We tend to forget about that. So love that about the thoughts. I'll, I'll um, put another angle on this. Being in positive emotional states, you mentioned people want to hang out with people who are positive, right? The positive patties, not the negative Nancy's. And I love to teach these things with energy protection, communication, etiquette, all sorts of things. Uh, in my School of Radiance membership, where, you know, a lot of the behind the scenes things that I do and that I've learned just really make things easier when we are connecting with others and to do it in a more effective way. Yes, agree. Being uh, highly coachable and a willingness to learn. I think that this is also really key. And I actually see this with various blood types, uh, certain blood types having more of a propensity of a desire to learn about how can we look and feel our best and care for our families in really meaningful ways. 
Um, the other thing is not only to be disciplined in thoughts, but to be aware of what is allowed in the consciousness and around us. So whether that's you know toxic products, toxic skincare products, bad food, um, canola oil, things like that, but also things like music, right? Popular music that's just got weird frequencies to it. Movies that's just, you know, programming, all that. And again, certain people. So it's important, I would say, before we go to bed to actually pray before we go to sleep as well. So that when we're in that um, state, well, we're, we're quite unconscious um, so that we are protected in that mode and to put the mom brain at rest before bedtime. So what you mentioned, um, you know, thinking about the day, it's almost like this highlight reel in your head. That's complete mom brain. And uh, it's a very natural response to uh, looking at the day in reflection before going to sleep to kind of wind down. So I would add the prayer before sleep for that protection and being in a state of gratitude are all really important things. Angela, do you have any closing words for us today? I think my closing words would be to just I think you've really touched on it, Rachel, as we've been chatting about people finding what's in alignment for them, right? And finding their own way in life that works to embrace the values that we've talked about and be able to spend time with family and not to be afraid of it because we know that there's a seasonality to life, right? There's a season uh, in the Northern Hemisphere where we live, four seasons every single year. We know that women who, with a menstrual cycle, we have this infradian rhythm, we're not the same. And just to embrace those seasons and think, you know what, it doesn't actually matter if I take a few years out and spend time with my family. I don't have to be in that go, go, go all the time, right? We want to like work and then rest and recover and refuel. And kind of sometimes our biggest creative breakthroughs are in those moments or those periods where we have time to reflect and just be present to what's going on. So I would say, embrace that you know what's inside of you and inherently what you should not should be doing but what you would enjoy doing and I would say get in touch with that side of you and embrace it as much as you can oh beautiful thank you so much Angela for those closing words um that really is one of the things I see a lot of women struggling with is being too much in the leadership role at home they're taking care of all the tasks at home and, you know, you were in that you were also probably the main breadwinner in your household when you made partner. I mean, that's an assumption. I could be I, I could yeah. be wrong. I was um, that, I, that. Yeah, I wasn't fortunately on that, which was why I was able to give up. And that's why I say if people are able to. Right. Um, but I think if they can, as you say, it's, it's difficult, isn't it? Because women are natural leaders, I think. And we feel like we have to do everything. Well, in but certain actually, ways, you know, we're leaders mm. with nurturing, with health and and love and caring and, and all of that. Um, I'm big into the traditional roles because I think what's happened, I mean, you're a prime example. I'm also a prime example. Working like a man, jet set lifestyle, here, there, everywhere, all the time. And then the woman's body is, is just inevitably going to crash. Guys can do that a little bit more and they can handle a little bit more um, travel than I think the, the female body can just really interesting. So depending on what your season, depending on what your values are, it, it's just also helpful to recognize that where you are in your life now is different than where you were five years ago or five years from now. So just go through life with a little bit of grace and ease, knowing that when you're going through shifts, um, just to listen to what's going to uh, allow you to thrive in that situation and look and feel your best. So love that. Cause if you're not living a life that's in accordance with your values or with good boundaries, you're going to be scratching your head. You're going to be tearing your hair out. You're going to be picking at your face. You're going to show signs of stress and self-soothing with what you actually do to your body, how you brush your hair, all sorts of things can play into um, aging you. If you're living a life that isn't in accordance with your values. So Angela, where can people find you and spend time with you? Thank you. Um, so my podcast is High Performance Health, which you've been on. It was a really popular episode about all radiance for skin. And then um, my website is Angela Foster Performance, or you can connect with me on social media. I'm mostly on Instagram at Angela S. Foster. Fabulous. Well, I really look forward to having you back on. I also look forward to seeing you in person at an upcoming health event. Yes. Yes, that will be, be very awesome. fun in the UK. Any excuse for me to get to the UK? 
Yay, uh, come to London. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love the UK and Ireland. So beautiful. Well, thank you, Angela. And again, everyone head on over to AngelaFosterPerformance.com. Her links for her show and website are in the show notes. Thanks, everybody, for tuning into the School of Radiance podcast, the place to be for all things hair, skin, nails, slowing aging. What does a beautiful radiant mindset look like? And all of that good stuff. Learn more over at theschoolofradiance.com where you can shop skincare. You can book a one-on-one -on -one for skin and rejuvenation guidance. Join my skincare tutorials for application and technique and dermal rolling demonstrations. And the School of Radiance membership for all the behind the scenes stuff with mindset, with energy, with communication, with really presenting in a radiant way to attract beautiful friends and relationships and connections so that, uh, you know, we meet others like us too and form our communities and have a great time looking fabulous in the process. So thanks, Angela. And for everybody who tuned in to today's episode right here on the School of Radiance podcast.